Elon Scar. Jack White. Stevie Classen. Mr. Underscore Hold Underscore Water Underscore. What's happening? Thank you. In the comments, looking for play mills. We got some business to discuss. You know, we had a deal. Today he got some to the world, and he went to the other place. I don't know if he's holding up his end of the bargain. You know, we're all gonna buy. What's on your mind? You know, tell me what's on your mind. You know, I'll tell you what's on mine. You know, I'm curious. I, I'm I'm really curious as to. Like, it's always a lot of shit going on, but right about now, at this particular period in time, there's a lot of shit going on in this world, you know? And as what else? the word I don't I don't hear you I don't hear you are you uh, you froze you hear me now yeah yeah what's happening it's good Shit, just got back from running low a few errands Mo took me over to uh, her sister's shop to wash my hair and all that stuff um Ronell dot butte thirty seven. Thanks for tapping in. So um I was just asking like what's what's on what what's on people's minds? What's on black people's minds? And and what what do you think should be on black people's minds right now? What you said? What what is on black people's minds right now and what should be on black people's minds right now? Um shit bullshit. What's on their mind right now is definitely some bullshit. Like what 504 boss mindset. What's happening? What's up, Ed? What's on your mind, Ed? Just what, like what? It, what you know what, 504 what? said the economy. What about it specifically? What up, Frank? Me and Frank be chopping it all the time. We we got a lot of shit on our minds. Go ahead, son. Bullshit. Like, you know, what Sexy Red is doing, what Drake about to do. Like, you know, they don't be thinking about nothing for real. Like, they just go along with what with, with the, the media tells them to pay attention to. Like, they don't really be aware or alert. And then they just repeat what the last person said repetitively all day. What is that? Um, you know, I want to be popular. I want to be first. I seen something clever on this on this other post, so I'm gonna say it here before anybody else say it, and then everybody going. I'm gonna get a bunch of likes and respond. Like people just want to be engaged and validated and confirmed in the form. So, like validate me. So so uh, I see what you. Said there, five hundred four. You said inflation. Um, I mean, what what 
is inflation, 504. Um, so low self-esteem is what, what you just described. Yeah. Um, Frank says they want to be important. I mean, I think it's probably a good thing to want to be important. That's a good thing to want to be important. Yeah. I don't think it, what, what would make it, what would make wanting to be important a bad thing, Frank? Welcome to Real Street Dreams, double underscore. <laughs> That's uh, titty, dom, 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 titty, titty, tom, double T in the building. Um, when in fact they are peasants. See, now that right there speaks to a fear, I think, based upon Frank Matthews said, um, when in reality they're, they're peasants. I think that um, I think that that is what they fear. I think that drives the preoccupation with wanting to be important without doing something or at, at least making an effort to do something that's important, you know? To want to be important. I mean, you should, everybody should be important to somebody, but not everybody has situations where they can be. Some people don't have family. You should be important to your family. You should be important to your mother and your father. If you have one, you may not have one. You should be important to your siblings. You may not have you. You should be important to your uh, significant other. You may not have one, you know? So ultimately, people have to find a way to be important to themselves and not, yeah. not in a narcissistic way, you know? But to behave in a manner in private in private that they if no one else know that they have uh significance and they are you know a contributor to at least a collective if nobody ever knows about them personally bmf sabrina lee what's up sis what up though how you looking Good, bro. I seen you followed me yesterday, so I followed. I followed you back. I don't. I don't believe we've met, but you know a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of the younger homies. So you know, once I seen Bino and and um and, and um who else? Clee. I think Clee was following you. I know you was. You must be I. Right. <laughs> so well, find out. You know what I mean. Um, but. Uh, if if you're part of, you know, uh, if you're not known, but you know you are doing things as a person that are the kinds of things that a quality human being does. You're working on yourself. You're developing yourself. Um, you know, you're learning every day. Uh, you're teaching what you can, sharing what you can to others, trying to improve the quality of life experience for others. You know, even if nobody knows that if you know you're doing that that's a way that you uh, make yourself know that you are important because you understand the condition general condition of society and you, you understand that what you're contributing even if it's if it's only yourself that you are improving you're contributing something to the general better condition of society so, so in that way you are important and in that way, you should know you're important to yourself. And it doesn't really matter if you're important, whatever that, that actually translates into. But say it means you are recognized or valued by other people. If you're not valued by yourself, then the fact that you're valued by other people doesn't mean shit. It don't mean nothing. You can't wrap yourself in, you know, the disconnected adulation of faceless masses, you know, that you can't insulate yourself from your insecurity with anything outside of yourself. So if you don't have a sense of self-worth or value, then nothing else actually matters. No amount of notoriety or, uh, or fame or money, none of, those shit, none of those things matter. You know, I've known some people with you know good amount of bread and all of that and and known and 
they couldn't put enough drugs or alcohol in their bodies to numb their anxiety because people behaved towards them in a manner that they didn't even understand. It's like, really, y'all treat me like I'm super nigga or whatever, but I, I don't feel like super nigga at all. Like, I don't feel like the person you treat me like. I feel like y'all don't even really know me, you know, which that doesn't really, uh, in, it doesn't f fulfill a person, you know. It's, it's a, what they call a uh, exercise in futility to go through a bunch of shit to try and get people to pay attention to you. Like, you know, um, going along to get along or regurgitating some shit that you heard somebody say somewhere that you think is going to make it's good. You're going to get the same degree of response that that person got, like trying to manipulate people into thinking that you're somewhere that you're not or someone that you're not is that's pointless until the lion speaks uptown philly underscore whiz what's happening that's right exercise and futility frank dante smith 743 809 jr what's happening what's happening you did you get a copy of raised by wolves who amongst you has not gotten a copy of raised by wolves who amongst you has not purchased the one of my books and uh and why do you not recognize the value in 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 what i have to share i took 12 years to write that book you know there's things in that book i promise you you won't find in any other book I promise you that i mean i've read thousands of books and i've not come across one that is like mine because i've comprised all of the information from those books and filtered them or that information through my actual life experience and by doing that created something extremely unique informationally and it's entertaining as a motherfucker because i didn't pull no punches or change dates or change names or anything you know but um yeah definitely get a copy of raised by wolves and if you haven't been to if you haven't been to my site again ask yourself why and I think it's I think it's fear. I think it's a lot of fear. I think that y'all understand that if you contend, if you face anything that I put forward, it's going to put your it's going to put your knowledge to a test. It's going to put your uh, uh, intelligence to a test. It's going to put your discipline and self control. Um, your mind state, everything's going to put it to a test, no doubt, no doubt. Just like engaging me is going to do, you know what I mean? So, burden of responsibility of having to do something else. Hey, if money man Monroe, that's that's Everett. That's Everett. Yeah. Hey, yo, Ev, what's going <laughs> on, nephew? Hey. I got. I got um I got a bunch of pictures, man. You gotta DM me your um your address. I got a bunch of pictures, man, to send you. A bunch of pictures. <laughs> For real. For real. You're gonna dig this. I, I've been meaning to reach out to you um and and get your information. How you been, man? How's your little sister, man? <laughs> How's your mom? Yeah, um. <laughs> yo, she grown. I just thought about that. You just put that in my head. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. man, she's grown, bro. That is crazy. That's what, what's up? Definitely DM me your address, Ed. Damn. Um. So, um, the there was something that Ed said. I want to go back a bit. Um. Yeah. Uh, Frank, Frank Matthews responded to 50 boss 504 boss mindset and he uh, he said no it means usefulness to humanity hold on a second we go back 504 boss man does being important mean being rich and famous no no that's what frank was responding to no one must be important to humanity that's right being being of service to others is the highest calling and it doesn't mean you have to be of disservice to yourself it doesn't mean you have to be so selfless that you don't Make sure that there's a smile in your heart or on your face. You know, in fact, by being first selfish 
meaning taking care of yourself, um, you are showing how you, you, you know, how people should conduct themselves, being self-responsible, being responsible for their own happiness and so forth. That, that is a service, you know, being an example of that is a service to other people, you know, you know, that's the first service that we provide other people. Example, the things we do, the things we say, those things are serving other people or, or they're not depending on the content, you know, um, uh, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And, and Stevie Classen said that, and, and, you know, um, is as, as, as old a cliche or adage as that is to the point it's so old, it's cliche. Um, it is one of those very basic, simple facts and truths of life. It's, it's good to be important, but it's more important. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. You know, like, like when I was a younger man, full of vim, vigor, and ego, you know, um, I did not realize how much I appreciated nice people. You know, but the only people I remember from high school are the nice ones. The other ones, no matter how much interaction I had with them, I don't, don't remember them. I don't remember. I only remember the nice ones, no matter how obscure they were in general or in particular to me, because I was, you know, BMOC, you know what I mean? So, um, and for those who don't know, that means big man on campus. And I was probably the most popular kid in my high school. And I went to school with Slick Rick, Dana Dane, Tashina Arnold, uh, um, uh, uh, Carlton, who played Cole. In fact, he used to work for a guy who worked for me in school selling cocaine. That's another story. Um, <laughs> but he was a kid. He just wanted to be down, I'm, I'm sure. I, know. I didn't I didn't engage him much. I didn't engage him much much at you know he was a he was a little kid. But um I only remember the nice cats, you know, in school, you know. Um it's 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 where it's important to be nice because um, if you're not, not a nice person, nine times out of ten, you're not a happy person. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know any mean people who are happy. I don't at all. Um, and I've known a lot of mean people. And no, none of them have ever been happy at all. Um, so it's important that you do what's necessary to to make your life as pleasant for yourself as possible so that you can be nice, you know, so you can be fucking happy, you know what I mean? And that too is a service. That's a service to other people. Taking care of yourself is a service to other people, you know? Being the best version of yourself is a service to other people. You know, life is not perfect, um, meaning life is not always what you want it to be but if it were i would imagine that it wouldn't be much it, it wouldn't be very exciting you wouldn't you know what i'm saying if it was always what you wanted to be i guess that's why uh kids who are born into great privilege um ended up end up a lot of times having um unfulfilled existences they they screw themselves up a lot you know because um they've they've had the corners smoothed off they've had the rough spots smoothed off they have all the pointy spots smoothed down and they do not meet or encounter challenge as often as a person who doesn't have those conditions does and thus they don't really mind the best out of themselves they don't have opportunity to mind the best out of themselves because they're not being tested at any point you know and, um, you know, that's the misfortune of fortune, you know, the misfortune of having, having, you know, great fortune. You know, you, you can't be overly insulated um, because nothing grows in the shade, all right? You got to, you got to be out there. You got to be out there. You got to subject yourself to the potentiality of something, you know, maybe not going the way you, you want. 
um, but also maybe going the way you want, you know, depending on, you know, your timing and your level of commitment and your level of determination to an outcome or a commitment to an outcome. Um, there was something that, that Ed said, I'm watching the evolution of AI. Google just dropped their newest version today, seeing what I can do and how I can use it. See that, see that, those are the kinds of things that see that that was in response to, you know, what's on your mind, yeah. right? What's on your guys' minds. I got it, Ev. I got you. I'll be, I'll be sending them out, uh, send the pictures out tomorrow. Um, you know, those, those kinds of preoccupations or focuses in this 21st century, we're a quarter of a century almost, you know, into the 21st century. And, and a great many of us, you know, I can point to a um, hundred people that I know that don't know anything about AI. And each of them could probably point to another hundred people that don't know anything about AI. That's a thousand melanated people that are not in step with technology in the 21st century, which obviously that's an, a disadvantage because yeah. that's AI is the future. AI is the present, but it is absolutely the future. So if you do not know how to use it, um, how to engage it, how to leverage it, um, how to manage it, you're going to be at such a disadvantage in the next year. It's not like you know, the difference between 1990 and 2000. The difference between 2024 and 2025 is going to be greater than the difference between 80 and 90, 90 and 2000, 2000, 2010. Meaning that, that the amount of change and evolution and technology and all the things that happen in a decade, that amount of change will occur in uh, 12 months now, as opposed to 10 years. And AI will have a large part in that. Yeah. The more people learn it, the more people use it, the more it will do. And things that people may never have thought possible will now be reality. And a bunch of our people will be sitting around going, you know, I don't even know what they're already doing. I don't even know. It's, you know, I don't even know what that is. You know, I don't even know what's going on. You know, I don't even. But if you want to engage them about a conversation, in a conversation about um, whether uh, Kendrick beat Drake, they can go. They can talk about that shit for hours and hours and hours ad nauseum. You know, like it's it's not good. It's not good, bro. And the more, the more progressive we are, as uh, those of us who are progressive, right? The as melanated people, the more, the more divided and separated from our um, brethren and sisters who are not moving along, we're going to be. We have no choice. How are we going to engage them? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you ain't on what I'm on, how we going? How we going to engage? If you don't understand, like even the language, yeah. the words, right? The words of success today are different words. You know, the language of success it, it's a whole nother language. Like, you know, every genre has its um, its own vernacular. You know. Right? So people in the pharmaceutical space, they have certain things that is particular to them. People in politics have certain things, ways they communicate that is particular to people in politics. Uh, people in economics, same thing, you know. Um, so if business in general or, you know, um, wealth building in general and it does has its own its own vernacular and you don't speak it you don't understand it how are you supposed to participate you're not 
was to get out the way and let progress happen. And where does that leave the person getting out the way, the people getting out the way? Where does that leave them? On the side where they belong because they just don't pay attention or care about anything about beyond their immediate needs. My time is things that's really, you know, that really need to be paying attention to are, are changing. They so far behind that there's absolutely nothing they can do but just be in people way. And that's what they're doing, just being in people way. They spend money recklessly. They don't save. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to be a part of a community. They don't want to invest. They don't want to, whatever's trending, whatever people are telling them to pay attention to, they're going to go pay attention to, but they're not even going to look beyond the surface. They're going to look at the first page of the book, never open it, never, you know, find out what's in it. They just go look at the surface of everything. They don't get the depth of anything. Okay. Question. Hold on. Stevie Klassen, you said you've been trying to order Raised by Wolves from Sweden. Uh, no, I don't let um, uh, Jeff Bezos uh, eat off of me. So I, I sell my own books. Um, so DM me, right? And then what I have to do is I have to get the the cost of um, the what is it the uh, mailing cost of packaging? No, it's it's yeah for them for him it is it's going to be um, what you call it? Um, I was right in my head for a second. I'm a little tired. Um, but it, it's 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 the extra overseas cost handling shipping. And handling fees yeah but they it's it's customs uh not not customs um i can't remember the thing having a brain fart but um usually when i send it to england it's like 28 dollars for shipping right and i have to fill out the uh that what you call it form um um shitty uh, nut what's going on <laughs> um so yeah do that do that bro do that uh, uh go to my uh, dm me and um rather than you know going to the site because even if you go to the site it won't account for the um the additional shipping going overseas but definitely do that and i'm hook you up with something else too i'm gonna send you a um a copy of um 50s first magazine cover ever which was my fourth um, anniversary um, issue of Don Diva magazine, and I had him sign 50 copies the day it came out. So um, I'll send you a, a copy of that as well, just because you know you you hollering at me all the way from Sweden, you know what I mean? And um, I'm gonna come to Sweden one day for real, for real. I've heard nothing but good things about Sweden, especially that it's clean as hell. <laughs> Um, but yeah, do that. Bernie Britton. Wrap it to the other book, Get Smart. Um, um uh, well, it's only available on ebook, uh, to Get Smart. I never reprinted, an, um, after the first run, and I still have part two that I, I, I'm not released. I haven't released part two yet. Um, it's just, you know, like allocating resources. I'm gonna get to that question too, based upon what you just said. Uh, getting, uh, you know, like allocating resources to print books, physical books, and then store those physical books and then have that those resources that money sitting in those books in my garage you know what i mean you know what i mean it's like it's, it's not work and then putting it in the in the in the, in the fridge and waiting right. for somebody to come get it it's like bro right. i need this money to actually do something all right all right and after years and years and years and years and years of doing that you know what i mean and then all these evolutions that have come about like you know, it was a time when that um, um, print on demand, the quality of the books just weren't up to my standards. You know what I mean? But now it's gotten, of course, a lot more competitive. Printing has gotten cheaper, you know, because um, of laser printing as opposed to actually running printing presses and stuff like that. A lot of that shit's changed. And when I put, put my first book out, which was like 15 years ago, um 
And um, and when I put my first magazine out, which was 24 years ago, you know, a lot has changed. So I, I can start moving more like that. And really, you know, pushing the ebook. I like a physical book. I love a physical book. But you know, pushing the ebook is just a lot. Obviously, a lot less overhead, right? And um, you know, and of course, the audio, the audio books or whatever, um, is a good move. A lot of people don't don't have time to read in actuality. And um, and some people just don't have that ability to sit and read a book, but they can listen, you know, while they work or whatever have you. Conflict creates character. Life without challenges causes a person to be overly in insulated. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Frank. Um, SB underscore EP, what's happening? <laughs> Frank says AI is evil. No, no tool is evil. The user can be evil, but no tool is evil. Knowledge dot speaks. What's going on? Traveling three fifty seven. T R V L I T R V L N three five seven. I'm assuming that's traveling. I don't know what traveling just came to my mind. Uh, Trey, what's going on? Trey underscore oxen. Winston Peck, thanks for tapping in. Uno Solodino, what's going on? Um, Frank Matthews says uh, it's managing us now they just had a hearing where they said they are using it to manipulate people in the u.s and they, it's just another thing to manipulate people who do not want to take responsibility for themselves so it doesn't really matter they've been manipulating people with that's been the whole that's the whole point and purpose of governance to manipulate and control yeah. people you know what i mean and people volunteer for it. jay wed what's happening man Television programs need to sign up for it. They right. sign up for apps to get new programming. Exactly. Moneybag Quando. That's right. Natural selection, uh, Frank Matthews said. Frank Matthews is a uh very cynical. Very, very cynical. He doesn't live he doesn't live here. He left he left the States. He did he did a meet, but he didn't come back. Um I hear that. Andre the poet, what's going on? Um AI will only work as well as its user low frequency questions for ai will give low frequency answers that's right of course of course um og valley dread 609 what's happening Wagwan. yes the shipping that's right but it's the uh, um customs part kjw underscore 78 okay sounds great i want to get my hands on your other book too um old gangsters and young guns and 50 critical quotes are uh, my other uh, three books. And um, Get Smart is, is the only one that's not physical. I haven't printed up any um, since I first dropped it. But um, physically, you can get 50 critical quotes. You can get Old Gangsters and Young Guns and Raised by Wolves. You know what I mean? Um, I'll give you a nice, uh, what you call it, a nice discount if you get all three. That's anybody. Uh, and if Stevie, Stevie Kelson's class and says, and if you ever come to Stockholm, then it's on me. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward. I'm vegan, by the way. Yeah. Um, Acer. In the situation with that one. Yeah, because I, I definitely, I don't want to go nowhere where I can't eat. <laughs> Ace, Ace, Ace Rothstein, 91. What's happening, Ace? Uh, uh, abandoned Truth. I just wanted to catch up uh here 1989 born underscore aj what's up 71 vert swerver what's happening i see you dre uh jlr 4597 what's happening okay i think we caught up so what was the what was the uh something you said and i said you know, I, I got a question what was the last statement that you made i wish we could rewind um i was talking about people's uh, quest for attention and what they are paying attention to, what they're not paying attention to, how they get caught up in nothing. Uh, it was something. It was something, and I, and I, and I, I wanted to uh, ask you, like, I, it was something around why, why people are preoccupied preoccupied with in 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 the manner that you expressed in in what you said before I started shouting people out and all that shit. Um, something about, uh, you said something about, basically something around what people, what people are prioritizing, why, what, what's important to people. Like my question is like, okay, well, what comes to my mind is why? Why, 
why are the things that aren't actually important so dominant in our society, in our particular group, in the melanated people's group? I don't like that whole black shit, whatever, whatever, because I know what it actually means. So I don't like that black shit, you know. But um, what, why is it that melanated people, by and large, Large. Not everybody. So melanated people out here really doing their thing and they don't get they don't represent the larger group, you know, um, not in any way that is like, like as promoted or propagated as the other image, the negative image, the destructive image, the backward image, the useless image, the pointless image, the you know, no good image. You know what I'm saying? Like we get we see plenty, plenty of that. And in the most um, popular forums, entertainment and so forth, especially entertainment directed towards youth, we see the worst representations of melanated people, right? Um, that underscore dude underscore Mr. Underscore Royalty, what's happening? Um, so why is it that we seem to be so preoccupied with the least important things in life? You know, especially in the time where there's so much exposure, there's so much information, there's so many things that people are being exposed to now that generally they were not. It, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. Like, you know what I'm talking about. There are things I've been talking to you and your brothers about since y'all were little kids. Y'all have known about them for 30 years. And people are just starting to talk about them. Like, they just happen. Sometimes I read comments and I'm like, you got to be. 12 years old. This but can't, then I be new. go on, I look, and they're not. Oh, yeah. yeah. I get it. I mean, I get it. You know, it, it's, it's kind of hard where, you know, the society is is backwards. People focused on the wrong things. Like, how, from how they date to how they eat is not, it's not in a positive space. It's not even a logical. It's just what's there and they just moving blindly just feeling throughout life so it's why hard. why huh why why do they act like there there are no beacons why do they act like there are no um places that they can go even like you don't have to go physically you can go right online you can go right online go to www.themindplugacademy.com click on there and send me, uh, uh, fill out one of the forms where I ask you what's important to you, what are you focused on, what is most um, significant in your life right now, and what is it that you'd like to do sooner than later? I'll, like I'll, I'm asking I'll you what's important out this week, so I can come back and tell everybody what 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 I came back with. So I have something to say about the Mind Plug Academy next week. But um, that's they, funny. They, you, they you, just. You are the result of the mind play Academy. That's I know. That's why, you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy that, you know, I guess I'll have a little bit more direct insight because what I have is just, I got life. Right. <laughs> so, exactly. so it's hard to be like, yo, go through this and it's going to give you a map. So I'm saying, I, at least if I go through that process in the, in the space in which they will, I could be like, all right. This is something that'll help you navigate it, and it'll keep you in course and, and relative to you know still enjoy life. Because people feel like once you start moving in that light, you gotta, you you really gotta shut off everything. And it's like, oh no, now I'm serious about life. I'm eating healthy. Uh, I'm drinking water. You know what I mean? I'm treating my friends better, like better relationship. Like people think that it's like a, such a militant turnaround in life that they that they you know they're slow to that to that decision. You. You fill out your form, Trey. When? When did you fill out your form? Let me know. A lot of simple mindset, minded shit getting propagated out here, and people gravitate to it. I'm guilty of it too here and there. Ed, Ed. So what? What is? What is the reason? Is it like junk food? Is it? It's like junk food for the brain. Is it? It's it's escapism. Is it like people are running from um, the burden of responsibility? Like what you just said, son, about um, feeling like if I begin to make any steps towards uh, cognitive thinking, 
responsible direction in life, then um, all, all fun is out the door. I don't know if y'all was paying attention, but if you look at my timeline, um, you know, we've been we've been home, you know, doing stuff here for the last uh, since actually since we got back in December from up top. But like you look all through my, my timeline. Uh, I don't know if you motherfuckers understand. Uh, I'm I'm enjoying life. Oh, you're not and it enough though. It don't look it don't look extravagant and and it don't it, your picture's not dope enough. You gotta take better angles and better filters. Show the level of the space. Show oh, the man. how big I got all this land. You gotta walk in the You gotta do all. You gotta sell it because everything else is being sold to them in such an extravagant way that it just looks more appealing. And that's and, people, but they but they're not I don't see motherfuckers I don't see them doing nothing with that, that either. So 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 you see uh Drake's house out there in um in Canada. And and you know, you see cars in the driveway or whatever, whatever. Okay. Um now what? He he got a bunch of fancy shit. Now what? Now what what is what what is that what is what does that do for them? What is that how does that that fulfilled them some kind of way. It, it kind of pushed them and validates the idea that they probably should listen to that person. He pro he got the stuff that they want, or they they told that they want, or the stuff that they ain't never seen, and now they see it and they want it. All they right, you want it. A cyber but, truck, and then they see niggas with cyber trucks. It's like nigga, I gotta get a cyber truck. So 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 what is what do you think that's about? I see you with that. I never thought about it before, but now I see you with it. I gotta get that. What is that about? Low self-esteem. Right. 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 It's looking for a shortcut. It's looking for a shortcut between obscurity, not being known, to fame and notoriety. They're looking for something, a single thing that they can do. And you got to be super fucking simple minded to think that such a thing exists. It doesn't. You need to burst your fucking bubble. But better me now than your life itself in five, ten years. And I and, and it happens. It ha happens to a lot of people in our community. I, I got a lot of cats who are, are my age who are just figuring it out. Like because these concepts aren't new. This thinking that all. All I got to do is get the chain he got and the car he got and the sneakers he got. And then I will suddenly be someone that I never actually worked on being independent of those things. That's not a new concept. Niggas been tripping over that, that invisible motherfucker for a long time. A lot of cats are sitting in penitentiaries with more time in than they ever had out with that thinking. A lot of cats are uh, rotting in the ground with that thinking. It's not new. Y'all keep falling for the same shit over and over again. And it's because you won't expand your mind. It's because you won't stand up, stand in your own two, right? 10 toes down, like so many of them like to say and don't even know what the fuck it means. It's, again, it's just something to say because they heard somebody say it and it's like, I can't buy the car, I can't buy the jewelry, I can't buy the designer shit, but I can talk like you talk even though I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. I don't know what, what I'm saying. I'm repeating what you said in hopes of it magically making me seem like somebody that I'm not to someone that I don't know. It's insanity. It's mental illness. I don't I think you have to send it uh, again, uh, Trey. Um, Drake bed costs three hundred thousand. They selling his bedroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They want to be able to. Thanks, just John. Have this job like that I appreciate you looking well and simply having land as a black man. Fuck all that other. Not to mention, I ain't dead. I'm not strung out. I'm not mentally ill, I'm not sick, and I live, lived a hell of a life. And nobody play with your butt. And nobody play with my booty. And I lived a hell of a life. You know what I mean? Like, statistics.
statistically, I'm an anomaly. You need to respect that. And when I say respect it, I mean you need to prevail upon me making myself, my wisdom, my knowledge available to you. Because I know that most of y'all don't have access to such. I know that because I, I kick it with a lot of cats. And they tell me all the time, like, they 38, 35, 40 years old. I've never heard that. Nobody's ever said that to me. I'm like, it's not that it's rocket science. It's that you have been more unfortunate than you think. You thought, oh, I didn't have fancy sneakers and... Uh, you know, uh, I wasn't riding around with my pops in this in this in, in dope convertibles and you know shit like that. Like you know, I didn't have house with back big backyards and shit like that. Like you know, that that's the least of it. That's the least of what you were missing. You didn't have a a, a strong stand up, charactered, responsible, real, actual man with a brain in his head to sit and say you matter enough to me for me to sit here and share what i have with you that's that boom there go right there that because they you know not even to put it on a mama but yeah they you know that that choice of your father don't need to be here you just here with me and the niggas I deal with only deal with you on a surface level Ooh. in the spaces in which they dealing with me. So you ain't never really going to have no man that you're going to learn from or invest and pour into you. Women don't be getting that. And it'd be like you handicapping the hell out your child Ooh. by just not having no man or just the man that cares about him in his life. Like, even if you're not with his father, just let him spend as much time as he can with that person as opposed to... Uh, Everybody in your family is all the way at the bottom tier of the people that he should be spending time with over his father because of what he's going to learn and what he's looking for from the father is totally different from anybody else. And a lot of these niggas just be missing that. That's what I, and I just, I learned that from just watching niggas have conversations with you and it'd be simple stuff. I'd be like, you said that to me when I was like six. Like the lesson this nigga's learning at 35, 38, like you gave me this lesson when I was six years old and it'd be simple stuff. And I'd be like, man, how much he's behind. You wouldn't know just because he got a car, he got a house, he's moving around. He's an adult. He got clothes on. Yeah. He could dress nice and fuck women. It's like, so it'd be like, you think he good, but no, what he's missing is, is deeper than that. And you won't recognize it until you oh you his woman and it's just that lack and you just searching for it and that nigga just cannot deliver what he's never had and that's that's at the basis of uh, all the low self-esteem stuff yeah you know when they started to deconstruct the family um back in the 60s when they started to run the man out the house uh in order for a woman to be qualified for um, uh, public assistance. That, that was a, a beginning of an attack. Uh, first, they had to disenfranchise the man. They had to disenable him to be able to so, take care of his family, which means they had to destroy the means by which he was taking care of his family. They had to, you know, get rid of the factory jobs and, you know, move him to places where he couldn't live because simply because he was a melanated man. Um, you know, all the different ways that they systemically undermine um, the melanated male's ability to lead his household, right? And then once that kicked in, once the adverse impact of not being able to earn a living um, came, you know, to a point where it started to impact um, his home. Then uh, the, the woman was now in a position being offered this assistance on the basis of there not being a man in the house, right? And that those two things, him being unemployed, her being now told you can get what you need to feed your children and whatever, whatever, but he can't be there. That was the ground zero, right? That, that started to create the separation, started to disseminate, you know, to disintegrate the family and um, remove that male influence 
and start to have whatever the impacts of not having the male, the balance of the male and the female influence, whatever that impact was, it started to develop then. And of course, the main thing it impacts is the uh, offspring, male or female's sense of self. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not here because he doesn't care enough. He's not here because I'm not worthy. Uh, what did I do? I did something wrong. Why does my father not love me? Why is he not around? Um, having no idea of the mitigating circumstances contributing to his absence, right? Um, those children, that generation, right? My generation, they grew up with, with this um, overwhelming need to validate, to be validated because of that missing piece from their development. And they, they began to really, really be very superficial, very materialistic, a way to compensate for what they did not have. They grew up with, like a lot of kids I grew up with, they grew up with uh, holes in their shoe. That was a common thing. When I was a kid in Harlem, growing up, common, kids with holes in their shoes, common. Um, Because the, the shoes they were wearing were shoes that were, or sneakers that belonged to their older siblings. Hand me down was a way of life. There were no um, cheap places for real, for real, they could go and buy clothes from, you know. Um, And that, the result of that, of that uh, needing to compensate for that sense of not being loved or valued, you know, by that primary male role model, um, it turned into the foundation of a culture, a culture of desperateness that made it okay for a kid who grew up in a house where you know his people are regular people they go to church on sunday you know they go to they work every day um you know they have they put a great degree of emphasis on on school and 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 you know social correctness you know uh, being mindful and being respectful and so forth whatever but their kids started to move towards more antisocial behavior, like selling and using drugs, you know, Um, and then, you know, know, gaining access to, you know, fiscal instruments, right, the things that people call money, um, they, they started to be able to get their hands on things that their parents could not, living these pious lives. You know, they're not making no whole lot of money, they're just keeping food on the table, some, you know, decent degree of clothing on the back. You're not naked, you know what I'm saying? You are wearing hand-me-downs most of the time, but, um, you know, you're managing, they're managing or whatever, whatever. And now this generation of kids, my generation, um, even, even no, the generation before mine, actually. The generation before mine, they were those ones that, that first started fucking with that dope shit, using it and or selling it and getting their hands on thousands of dollars and being able to you know completely change their whole condition where they lived and you know what they could do and what they could have and what they can enjoy and um it became culture it became like a thing i remember when cats didn't know what a Lamborghini was, what a Ferrari was, what a Rolls Royce was. My at my common friends, I knew because of the difference in my developmental circumstances. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the average person in the hood in Harlem, they didn't know shit about that because at best they had a drug addict in their family. They didn't have no drug dealers because it wasn't that common. It was not that common. If you had 200 families on a block, you know, I mean, you're talking about, you know, six, five-story tenements, right? And, and you're talking about, you know, um, 20, 30 of them, you know, from one end of the block, from one avenue, from, you know, what they call Frederick Douglass Boulevard down to uh, Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard, which is 8th Avenue, 7th Avenue. You know, there's 30 buildings, five stories each, you know, a family in each one, essentially. There may have been maybe two families in which there were drug dealers making money. There may have been 
10 families in which there was at least one drug addict. But everybody else was regular. That's in the hood. And that's 15th Street, 16th Street, 17th Street, 18th Street, 19th Street, Hunt 10th Street, Hunt 12th Street, Hunt 13th Street. It wasn't like y'all think. Like everybody was a fucking drug dealer. And, and, and everybody, you know, because cause we in the hood, we're all drug dealers. And we're all street people because we live in the hood. It's fucking retarded. That's retarded. That's not nonsensical. No, that's not how it was. And it still isn't how it is. No matter how much this generation, this contemporary generation tries to make it seem like everybody in the projects got to be on some some shit, carrying a pistol, whatever. Like, come on, fuck on. Since when? Since when? That would be like we're a whole species of fucking criminals, which ain't the case. You got some people who who bout it and some people, most, who aren't. And that's always been the case as far as, as long as human beings have existed. So, so when the generation before me started making that 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 money, you know, the the couple that were making that money, they started to set a a precedence. They started to they set a, a bar. And unbeknownst to them, they were turning out their square contemporaries you know who didn't come from those kinds of lifestyles whatever whatever but they were they were you know feeling that impact of not having that father around in in the instances where the father wasn't around and they were feeling that low self-esteem even though they could not identify they were feeling something was missing and that missing piece if you don't don't know what the missing piece is just think about it like a puzzle if you don't know what the missing piece is and you got several different pieces still to put this puzzle together and you're in a particular section you're trying to figure out what goes right here you're going to try a whole bunch of different shit trying to fill in that space right there right some of that shit you get wrong like you know in life it'll kill you or it'll change the trajectory of your life in such an an extreme way way that you may never get back to your true and intended path. I'll talk about this in Raised by Wolves. Self Peace Style of 3439. Um uh Trey Oxen asked a question. How do you feel about a father who didn't want his son to be better than him? A father who was only inclined to service himself only. I mean he's a narcissist. There's a reason for that. There's a reason and it's got to do with low self-esteem. If he's one of the kids that I'm talking about who came from degradation and deprivation and, you know, hardship because, you know, uh, one, because there wasn't a secondary earner in the house, and two, because the absence of that primary male role model left him unfulfilled, left him with a hole in his being, then if he's picking the wrong pieces, trying to fill that hole, which is, well, maybe it's girls. I need, I need to, I need to get as many girls as possible, and that's what will make me feel better about myself. And then he screws a bunch of different girls, makes a bunch of different children that he did not plan and can't take care of. Now he's that's not it. That's not it. What is it? Oh, I know. Maybe, maybe I need to, um, I need to make more money. I need to get some money. I need to do whatever I got to do. I got to rob, steal, kill, sell drugs. What I got to do? Get some fucking money, uh, you know. And then he gets some money. It's okay. I got the money. Um, now I need to, uh buy a car and can't be in the car without being fly. I gotta buy some clothes. And if you're gonna have clothes, you gotta have accoutrements. So I gotta buy some jewelry. And if you're gonna have some jewelry and some clothes and accoutrements, then you gotta keep on selling drugs so you can maintain the lifestyle. So you gotta, you know, it's a cycle and they get caught up in that. And of course, it doesn't fulfill the void because the void, the piece that's missing ain't none of that, right? And when they, when one of those kids that they didn't mean to make comes of a certain age and responds to the absence of their absence and is pushed to go further harder and starts to do what they were trying to do to fill themselves better than they did now you're you're a reminder of where i fell short my son now you are making me feel inadequate because you're fucking outdoing me now you know what i mean it's it's all based in the same situation it's low self-esteem. It's looking for things that are outside of you, not. They're in you. The fulfillment 
element of you is in you, but you have to mine it out. Now, how do you mine it out? See, that's the question. That's the critical question. The how. The how is in the finding out. The how is in the in the doing the work, in the learning, in the the studying, in the you know uh, setting aside some time not to fuck off, not to get high, not not to go party and hang out, but a time to sit and go. Let me figure out what I need to do to mine forward the best of me. You know. If there's no time at which you're willing to allocate time to that endeavor, then no matter what you do or what you get from what you do, you'll always have the same shit on your back, the same monkey on your fucking back. Low self-esteem. Don't do the dumb shit. Come on, this is going to do it. This is going to put your name on the map. This right here going to make them see you. They'll never forget this. They're going to know your name after this. That's low self-esteem is making you do shit that makes you wake up the next day going, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Then you want to say how you was high. I was high. I was drunk. I was fucked up. I was, no, you wasn't. Those things are just symptoms of what's actually fucking wrong with you. And what's actually wrong with you is you got a big ass void in you where your sense of self-worth should be. You got a giant hole in your being where your sense of value should be. And you can't buy that. I don't give a fuck how much you spend, how much you get. I've made millions i've been around motherfuckers that have made millions all my life and uh, uh no it don't do it buddy it don't do it buddy I'm telling you ask any rapper they'll tell you you think that, that these things that they're accusing drake of uh uh of being a short eyes you know guy who has uh attraction for very young girls and stuff like that do you think that something that 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 comes out of him being fulfilled assuming that it's true you think that comes out of him saying well i got all the clothes and cars and jewelry and homes i could buy what can i do now now i'm just i'm bored do you think it's boredom that makes a grown man want to spend time with a child but no this uh there's a, a child in him it may not be in his work ethic. He might be an adult in his work ethic. His results would indicate that is the case. He may be an adult in his business acumen. He may, may be an adult when he is behind the wheel. But when it comes to interacting with the opposite sex, then the little boy, boy that never got what it needed from that primary male role model because I mean, I've, I've kicked it with his pops. We hung out in some club in, in, in um, some dope jazz joint um, in L.A. one night. Super cool. We smoked together and all that. He's cool. But I could tell what kind of guy he was because I grew up around those kind of guys. You know what I mean? And, you know, his mother was just, Drake probably got a half a dozen fucking siblings out there. <laughs> tell me whether he know it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's what it is. So, again, driven by the void created by the absence of a primary male role model that little burst that just imagine and i've shared this before van dyke underscore brown was popping thanks and elsewhere it was goody man um imagine yourself as five people comprised of five people right there's the you that that's that's created by the nurturing of your mother the protection and, and of your father um the um guidance or exposure of a another adult who is not your mother or father so doesn't want to protect you from the things they'll protect you from a lot of times fathers and mothers will call themselves protecting you from something and they'll fuck you up because they insulate you from the things that you need to endure and need to experience in order for you to come to the full fruition of you but you have a another male uh, or another adult who is not your mother or father. Maybe it's an uncle, maybe it's an older brother who will provide you with, what's up, Phil Negro? Who will provide you with, uh, you know, that exposure that mommy and daddy would insulate you from. Hey, nigga, let me tell you what the fuck is really going on, nigga. You, 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 all that abstaining, whatever, nigga, you better learn to put on the condom because I know you're going to fuck. I don't give a fuck what your mother and father say. I know you're going to fuck. So here's a condom. This is how the fuck you use it. And whenever you see and you feel like you put this shit on, Okay, because it's gonna be me that gotta take you to the goddamn doctor. Because your parents don't even know you fuck. 
right? <laughs> that kind of, you need that. And then say you need that best friend, that contemporary, that somebody that's your age, you know, somebody that, you know, is going to trip through life and make the mistakes with you. He going, he going, he going to do that girl with you without the condom. <laughs> if you don't listen to that, that one, you know, older person who ain't trying to protect you so much, but trying to guide you more so, trying to, you know, hip you. He gonna be the one that's with you when when you when you get burnt. Both of y'all gonna be going to the doctor together, right? You need that. You need that that because that's a person who's going to uh, contribute a, a lot to your identity, to your independent identity, the identity that you have independent of your primary caregivers. You know, your mother and your father and so forth, or whatever. Because you're not just a result of them. You know, you bring something uniquely your own into existence when you come into life. You're not just a collaboration of mommy and daddy you know whatever that makes you feel me um and war and war that's what i say what's that no and warfus <laughs> um never seen you before cage four two zero three welcome so you know then there's so you got mommy you got daddy you got uncle big brother whatever whatever you got best friend and then you need that 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 teacher you know that person who really has a worldly understanding and you may not interact with them much but when you do you always come away with some uh broader perspective of yourself and of the world and yourself in the world you know what i mean an educator you know something like that right somebody that develops that aspect of your being now if you don't get that that means that that aspect of your being does not get nurtured and you end up being you know somebody who is uh, a good provider you know a nurturer um somebody who's you know kind of hip in the world and you know knows what's what know how to keep your head from getting knocked off your shoulders and all of that and you know how to have a you know a meaningful relationship with your peers and so forth whatever but you you you, you kind of dumb as a box of rocks like you know how to get up go to work put your pants on you know what i mean but there's no intellectual sophistication whatsoever ever. that is something that a great many of our people seem to suffer from so they may have one or two of these they may have this one a lot of times they got that one you know that older person who gonna hit you to shit whatever whatever but ain't particularly concerned about your health and welfare you know what i mean hey you know nigga this is what the fuck it is i'm gonna tell you like this way you only be listening you ain't gonna listen your ass gonna be fucked up but you're not that's all you know it's a lot of niggas ain't got no mother or father or they got a mother and no father or they got a father and no mother any of those components that don't get fed if each one of those contributes to the development of the five collective children that make up you then they don't get nurtured so if you start out as a child and you know in this respect and mommy contributes to the development of that child into an adult daddy contributes to the development of that child to an adult older brother uncle whatever contributes to development that child an adult best friend contributes to that and the best friend can be changing like you can have a best friend from first grade to fourth and then you know another one from seven to you know high school and then in high school a whole other motherfucker but they all ask they they contribute to the aspect that same aspect of your development right that's why you had different best friends at different times you know what i mean but they all kind they fill the same void wherever whatever that void is represented by it, it, at that point in your life when you alternate to a different person who now fills that role you spend more time with that person now you spend more time with that person it's the same kind of time the different person contributing to the same aspect of your development and then you have that 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 wisdom that wise person that intelligent person you know that that gives you you know that uh tells you you know you read that watch this look at that you know what i'm saying think about this think about that you know and i'm not trying to be your father and i'm not trying to be your uncle and i ain't trying to be your best friend i'm telling you some shit that you need to know that you need to to understand that you need to be aware of beyond you know family and friends you need to know about the world right those people all contribute something those types of relationships it doesn't have to actually be your mother it could be someone who is like a mother to you a primary female role model same thing with your father a primary male role model right and then a secondary male role model and then a male contemporary or a female contemporary depending on what you you know what you are or identify as and i'm fucking with you um and, and um 
then you know then you got to have that person that's going to give you a world view now if any of those aspects of you don't get their full, full fulfillment they will be the thing that undermines you whatever one doesn't get its full development will be the one that sticks its foot out because it's like this i didn't get what i need so what you have a great job making six figures a year so what you have a great relationship with your woman or your man and you know y'all have good family and all that whatever whatever i didn't get what i needed and that's why tomorrow you're going to wake up in the bed with somebody you don't know and you ain't going to know why I don't know why I did that. I'm not like that. I don't know why I did that. I had no idea why I did that. Oh, my God, what did I do? What made me do that? I'm the most responsible, the most reliable, the most consistent. And then out of nowhere, I go out, have a couple of drinks, and next thing you know, I wake up next to somebody I don't fucking know. Why did this happen? Because there's a component of you that didn't get what it needed, and you may or may not have recognized that deficit in your being and decided that you had enough of the other aspects of yourself that you didn't need to worry about that. You didn't need to first and foremost identify it, then try and figure out how to satiate that, how to satisfy that, right? How to appease that, that need. You didn't, you feel, I, I, can, I, can, I can slide by, I don't really need that. Whatever that is, something's missing. I don't know what it is, but I feel like something's missing, but everybody else is so impressed with me they like my car, they like my house, they like my clothes, they like my style, they like my personality. I'm so funny, I'm so friendly, I'm so, so I'm good, I'm good. And I'm better off than that one. I'm certainly better off than her, I'm better off than him. Comparing yourself to the shit and talking about how well you smell ain't, ain't really a good practice, just so you know. So if, if these things are not addressed, these de deficits in your being, they contribute to the, the bullshit that makes you go, what the fuck did I do that for? What made me do that? Like, I know better than that. Why did I do that? It's, it's that. So what do you do about it? You, one, you identify it. If you don't do introspective things, if you don't uh, study, if, if you don't look inward, then you may not, notice that something's missing if you are so reliant upon external gratification and being able to manipulate that out of other people then you may not notice there's a deficit you may not notice until you have poured so much in to the hole that you may not know is there that you're like exhausted so I keep filling this fucking hole and I bought a better car. I got a bigger house. I have a more attractive spouse than the last. I'm making more money. People like me more. People are very impressed with my, my social media feed. I'm always getting high, high fives and pats on the back and pats on the ass. And I don't understand. Why, why, why do I feel like I don't want to live? And it's because you haven't gone in one place, the one place that matters. You haven't gone inside. You have not gone inside. And that's where the problem is. The problem is inside, not outside. You don't need to buy more nothing. It, 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 ain't, it ain't if I just get that one, that that one motherfucking, that one piece of Louis, the, 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 that one pair of shoes. If I just, if I can just get that one, if I can get the rims, Got the cough. I could just get the rims. I'll be like, if you say saying shit like that to yourself, there's a problem. There's a problem. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with aspiring to have the experiences that you want to have in this life. I'm saying that if that is your prime motivation to consume, they got you, motherfucker. They got you. You, you are a debt slave. You are not on your side. You are a product. You got to go inside. I know it's scary as fuck. I know it because I did it. Scary as fuck. And you know what? You do it alone. Nobody does it with you. And a great many of the supports 
that you have around you are based upon your current operation. When you start being introspective and start being self-aware and become self-responsible and self-driven, uh, um, a lot of those, those relationships, a lot of those supports, they're going to fall away because they're contingent upon the person you have been up to that point. They won't be sustained by the person you evolve into. So you know how you can say, I like my life. I love my life. I like, I like this, that, this, that, yeah. I just want to get rid of this one thing right here. Think of it like, uh, not necessarily, but potentially. The string on the sweater. And you pull that. that well, we get this fucking string off you. Pull this. The next thing you know, you got a short sleeve. Damn, I didn't want that. I didn't want a one short sleeve sweater. But you never know how connected to the things that you do want, the one thing you don't want is. But when you come to the understanding that this has to go, I want a loving, harmonious, non conflict, reciprocal, respectful relationship. I want it with this woman that I'm with, but she's combative, she's selfish, she's um, immature. All right, so you identify what you wanted, and you've identified that this person, whom you genuinely love, does not possess the attributes or the characteristics in order for you to have that with them. So you keep saying, I want this type of relationship. I want this type of relationship. You have to take, take into consideration that in order for you to have that, the one that you have, the relationship you have, the one you're used to, the one you're attached to, you can't keep that and have what it is you want to. Those are the kinds of realizations that make people backpedal, make them go back and say, oh, well, fuck it out. We can work it out. We can just work it out. I'll just I'll just find somebody on the side that I could fuck with. You know what I'm saying? And you know, whenever this one gets on my nerve, I'll just go and chill with this one, whatever, whatever. And you know, then I'm good. I can I can handle that. I can handle that. You know, because I don't want nobody else to have her. You know, I don't want nobody else fucking. You know, you know what I'm saying? I paid for them too. You you did. <laughs> so like something I might have said before. <laughs> Somebody else is squeezing the titties now, no, and that's man. good. That, that means your hands are free to hold something that you want to hold, all of it, not just the titties. You know what I'm saying? And life is short. You know, whatever it is you think you want to get to, I suggest you start getting to it. Whatever it is you have to do in order to do that, whatever sacrifices you have to make you know in your time or attention or energy or whatever the fuck it is that makes people so apprehensive about allocating a certain amount of time towards a task that is not about fun or entertainment or distraction or escape but actually about furthering one's internal development that nobody can see like people don't want or seem to not want to invest into things that well nobody can see that like, what, what difference does that make in real life? What difference does it make if they can see it or not? Doesn't make a difference. That's all in your mind. People only have the power in your life that you give them. There are people who don't like you for shit, but you don't give a fuck. So it, it doesn't matter. But there are people who who don't like you and you just... You got to figure out a way. I got to figure out a way to make them like me. Why don't they like me? Like, why give that power to anybody? To have you jumping through hoops, bending over backwards, trying to make them like you. Why? And, and why don't you realize you're doing that? Why don't you realize that you're giving that power away? Why wouldn't you just keep that power for yourself and say, hey, I like me. Fuck the world, the whole, whole world. I like me, and I'm, 
I like me so much that I'm going to stand up for myself whenever somebody tries to impose upon me because they, quote unquote, don't like me, which in real life means they don't like themselves and they hate the fact that I like myself. It reminds them of what they're missing. Thus, they don't like you. It's never about you. People think about you, feel about you as much as you think or feel about them. Think about it. You don't really think about people or feel anything about people at all. Anytime you think about someone else, you're thinking about yourself in comparison to them. You're thinking about you, and then you're correlating it with them. Everybody does the same thing. Like, I think about him as my son. You know what I mean? Um, but other than that type of dynamic, where this is your somebody, you know, the flesh of your flesh, blood of your blood, um, you know, or your or your partner that you 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 care about and love and respect and so forth, which would mean you just if you you know you want to you want to be your best because you care about them enough to want to give them your best, you know, but in terms of like tripping over a motherfucker because of what you think they think about you, you bugging, you bugging out because they ain't thinking about you. They're not. They're not. If you die right fucking now. If Drake dies right fucking now, you know, when Michael Jackson died, like the fucking world, like it went. Err. <laughs> and that's Michael Jackson. He had to give his whole fucking, the whole 50 years of his life in order for that degree of, you know, minute care to occur. But the world gonna, gonna go on, man, no matter what you do or don't do. So you may as well do you and fuck them, seriously. You will be happier when you un unburden yourself with whatever it is you're telling yourself that people are thinking about you. You'll be completely unburdened when you stop telling yourself that bullshit. They ain't thinking about you. If they were thinking about you, you'd be able to call them and ask them for some help or some assistance or something, some guidance, something. You can't, though, can you? Because you know they're not thinking about you. You tripping. You bugging. Oh, they, I got to show these motherfuckers. That they think, they think, they think, they don't think shit. They don't, don't give a fuck. They don't think nothing. Wake up, snap out, out of it. You, 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 you're delusional. That's your low self-esteem that you're tripping. You ain't going to find whatever it is you're looking for outside of you. So stop. Try it. Try it for a good day. All y'all, for a whole day, whoever it is that's watching this now, I'm going to watch this later. For a whole day, I want you to get up tomorrow and be like, I literally don't give a fuck about what nobody thinks. Nobody. Today, nobody. I'm not going to trip over what my mother thinks or what I think she thinks. Because you, you, I mean, you, know, you can't read their brains. You don't know what they think. You can try and interpret what they do and say, that means you think. If you did that or said that, that means you think. And it might be logical to you if you were the one doing the thing, you would know what you were thinking when you did it. That doesn't mean that's what they're thinking. So let that, that shit go. Not your mama, not your siblings, not your employees, not your employer, nobody. Not just nobody. Just be like, whatever. You know? What's up, mama? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Oh shit. Well, on that note, y'all. <laughs> Love you. See you when it's here. She probably just <laughs> put her finger in her butt and let you taste it. You nasty. I hey. know type of hey. thing. Hey, listen. That's I some good you. shit. <laughs> That's some good shit. It was fried just right. <laughs> <laughs> But y'all, man, you know, hopefully, willfully, man, y'all, y'all take away something of value from from what I've shared. Easy paper, what's happening, Uncle P? Um, I'm about to tap out, and uh, God I did. Slim Tia, what's happening? Chris, Chris, Chris on Thompson, what's good? 
Charles Jordan, 735, King Great 57, Fox Body. What's going on, Fox Body? Been a minute, man. What's happening with you, man? Tony Mossberg, Tavares, 11. What's happening? Superstar 420. Thanks for tapping in, everybody. We went um about, about a little 25 minutes over, whatever. I thank my son for giving us this additional time. And um, yeah, man, we'll be back on uh, on Thursday, 7 o'clock. And you know, Instagram actually fucks with, with me and they definitely fuck with him. So what I need y'all to do, I need y'all to, after you watch this, back up 10,000 un underscores. <laughs> What's going on, Tony? Hello to you too. Um, uh, um, share this, you know, share it with other people, share it with other people and, and let them know, you know, that it's, it's some useful shit. And there's something that came out of this interaction is useful to somebody somewhere, you know, um, share it, man, share it with other people so that other people will have access to it and that we can get, you know, more people engaging, more people building, more people adding, you know. And, you know, at some point in the not too distant future, we're going to get on the road. So we'll, we'll be, of course, you know, Atlanta and we'll, we'll go, go to, you know, Charlotte and New York and, Detroit. you know, different places. Mm -hmm. Chicago, Detroit, Chicago, Kansas yeah. City. Yeah. You know, yeah, and we're going to sit down and, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a father and son forum, you know. Um, but of course, of course, everybody will be invited, you know, mothers, uh, uncles, cousins, everybody's invited, you know. But it's going to be a father and son forum, of course. We're going we're gonna to engage about a lot of different things um, as it relates to relationships and as it relates to, you know, the impact of our collective movement, because that's most important. You know what I mean? Like. I bet you Puff wish he had more um, support, Drake, you know, um, wish he had more support right about now. Real support, yeah. real support. Not you, you winning, I love it, like drug dealers, you know. When drug dealers are winning, oh, man, we everybody's fucking favorite. As soon as we get jammed, oh, we the dumbest niggas in the world for all that shit we was doing. Same shit. People love to see you go up, but they love seeing you go down even more, you know? You know? Um, so really it's about contributing to that understanding that a collective is very, very important. A lot of people don't have support. A lot of people don't have support. A lot of people don't have support system. So we want to create uh, a support movement, you know? And uh, We Pop and Son is going to be in motion. I would say by july um um we're gonna go up in the studio bring some people in you know and uh probably shoot out there in gwinnett at the homie spot and um what up dorian money bags um go up and 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 you know have about 50 people or something like that come through sit down and then have a have this kind of engagement you know where you know people can actually you know speak to what we got going on and what they got going on and contribute, you know, to, to the conversation, essentially. So, like that there. So, we popping, son. Share it with people. You know, you watch it, you like it, share it, man. Share it with one person. If you don't, don't do that, you got to ask yourself, what's up with that? If you watched it, you fuck with it, and you don't share it with one person, and it don't cost you nothing, takes no time at all, you got to ask yourself, like, what the fuck is wrong with me? And is that the same thing that's keeping me from being happy? or from growing or from you know being a better version of myself because it doesn't make sense and, and i say that because we do a lot of that like our collective does a lot of that but no fucking reason i guess the contemporary term for it would be hate but if if it is hate it ain't hate for me it ain't hate for my son it's hate for yourself you hate yourself and you hate anything that looks like you especially if it looks like it is doing better than you. And you never know what's going on in people's lives. So don't don't be tripping. I bet any of you motherfuckers would have traded places with Drake uh, two weeks ago. Not so much now, though.
Because believe me, he, he can't hug up to his stuff. He needs real fucking support. He can't, y'all think that, it, I believe y'all entertain the idea that he could sit back and say, oh, I don't care that they calling me a pedophile. I don't care that, you know, I just got this deal for, what was it, 100 million? Some dumb shit like that? 300 million. And, and, and now the deal is fucking useless. You, you think that he's just going to sit back and say, well, I got a bunch of stuff anyway. I'm good. No. He wants to be able to know that there's somebody that he can speak to and they're going to really, really be coming from somewhere solid towards him. And I guess that would be his mother to the degree that she can understand and relate and so forth or whatever, you know? But he got, obviously he's got betrayers in his camp. So he don't know who to the fuck he can trust but he was he was betrayed severely betrayed from pretty close within the circle you know so don't get caught up in the bullshit y'all it's nice to have stuff but if stuff is all you have that ain't so nice believe me or not find out later right son yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love you. Love you too. And uh, I will talk to you as always sooner than later. But um, see you again here on Thursday at 7 o'clock. And uh, yeah, tell a friend to tell a friend, man. Check in. Pop and son. We pop and son. All right. Remember to think critically so you can live wonderfully. Peace. Unplug out. Out. <laughs>